that she wasn't going to do it. When we got home, I, you know, I was like, why? He was like, because I don't want you to leave. Oh, okay. he's telling the truth. Yes, he is. I want to have the best for her that I can provide for her. I can't do it, then I want the father to do it. That's why I hyphenated the last name, too, yeah. just in case, you know, she's not. Love is quite unpredictable and a very wholesome subject, but with love comes reality, which is most times as disappointing as your wife who just gained an extra 10 pounds. Sometimes love doesn't mean two people are good for each other. In this case, where a woman falls in love with a man after he saves her life, and this love becomes something else she regrets when she gave birth to her child, and he happens to have an inherited disease that's definitely not from her side of the family. A woman had a near-perfect romance until her son was born with a rare illness and her boyfriend now has doubts that he's the father. But the defendant's paternity doubts have led to constant fighting and tension in your relationship. You desperately hope to prove he is the father to save your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Reed, you believe it is medically impossible that you are Lucas's father. You say you bonded with him at birth and have taken care of him and loved him. But every time you look at Lucas, you are haunted by the doubt you are not his biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. They clearly had some form of connection, and though it took a while before they got to give it a chance, but that also didn't last very long either. I was terrified. You were? I mean, <laughs> outright terrified. I, I, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I mean, name me one parent that, that does know what they're doing, you know, first time. That's what I my have. mom said. Did you have any doubt during that time the child was yours? No, no, not at, not at the time of the pregnancy, I didn't know. Okay. When did the plot twist come? <laughs> <laughs> With his ex-girlfriend. Okay. The conflict started between me and her. Well, then she starts whispering in his ear, oh, well, what if it's not yours? There was some argument. There were some arguments? Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and ex of mine decided to be disgusting and uh, send a very vulgar message to my phone. He found it and thought that maybe there was some continuing relationship there. Now, in her defense, it's not her fault her ex is that disgusting, but both of them could have handled the aftermath a lot better. Him leaving right after is just a little too soon. I had a, uh, a blood clot and they put me in the hospital, put me on blood thinners, and they said the blood thinners very a massive risk of neither one of you making it through. And I called him and I said, you need to come home. I'd never been so scared in my life. And I told him that I didn't know if Lucas was gonna make it. I didn't know if I was gonna make it. And so when you got that call, Mr. Reed, what did you do? But all I could do not to cry too, but I knew as a man that I needed to be strong and I needed to be her rock. He came home, we spent yep. the next month in the hospital. They finally Sweet. sent us home and said, as long as nothing else goes wrong from here to the end, maybe we'll have a healthy baby. Sorry to say, but that ex needs to mind her own damn business. The plaintiff still has some dots to fill in, like her husband that she doesn't want to give his name out, or the fact that her child has an inherited disease that they can't find the source of. So Lucas yes. was diagnosed with albinism. Yes. Uh, on its surface, when they first told me, I laughed because I didn't realize how serious it was. We all hear the word albino. Nobody actually thinks about what it means. And suddenly you realize it doesn't just mean that he's pale and blonde and blue eyed. It means that his skin can't take sunlight. The only huge doubt I have is, is the means, albinism. That was a physical uh, word and that, that's what. It means bleeding on his brain. His body's just not equipped to handle anything. He, he can't go outside. He can't not take much. bright light. No, um, no flickering light. They're, they're saying his eye movements um, are, are partially from a, a bleed on his brain. Mm -hmm. And we don't know if that bleed is because of the blood thinner or is it part of his albinism? And that albinism is still giving me doubts. The thing about genes is that they can be in your lineage without you knowing about it, unless you look intentionally. But in this case, both of the parents are quite understanding. But there's also a lot of doubts on who the albinism might have come from. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Reed, you are the father. I can see how relieved you are. I'm shaking. A Michigan man plagued with a medical condition since childhood claims it would be a miracle if he fathered his girlfriend's daughter, especially since she cheated on him with another man. Mr. Runnels, you claim a lifelong medical condition led you to believe you would never be a father. That was until the birth of your daughter, Ireland, that Mr. Runnels is not Ireland's daddy, as you wish in your heart he were. But you say the truth is, another man is her biological father. Mr. Runnels, why is this test so important? This test is so important to me. For me to be able to have a daughter, it's a miracle. Having Ireland. Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Taylor? Yes, Your Honor. You say you want 
that miracle too. Yes. But you just don't believe. It's, okay. Instead of being up top, it's more towards the bottom of the head. The, the, the actor just said that it's a big possibility that I may never be able to have kids. The surgeries don't take. Calling cheating an alternative is honestly a little wild to say the least. But hey, if they truly tried everything they could, I think she should have been a little bit more patient or at least, you know, had the decency not to break his heart by cheating on him and becoming some other dude's cum dumpster. But now he's built a bond with this baby and the truth is now out. But did you tell Mr. Ronalds you cheated? No, ma'am. No, I did not. He found out physically had, on my I Facebook. I had to hack her Facebook and find out by myself. So, and, and so what did you see? I was shaking so bad. And I mean, every time I get to still thinking about it, like right now, my knees are just shaking because it hurts so bad to know that. Because up until that point, you believed you God. were the yeah, father. Yeah. And this was your miracle child. I mean, child. legally, I am the father. Legally, right now, I am the father. How far along was she when you found out or was uh, baby Ireland already here when no, you no, broke no, into no. We, um, I was about 22 weeks when he found out yeah, we, uh, I, found out I was through the hospital appointments, all the pregnancy, ran her bath when she needed it. I went to the store when she wanted something. You know, I was there. And so at 22 <laughs> weeks, you find this out, and yet you still stick by her. Yes. And you stick by the baby. Hospital, the other guy was not our choice. Her demands and fears are baseless since she got herself into this mess in the first place. And it's all so convenient for her. The thing that gets me is I don't really see him so much in Ireland as I do, like, I see the other guys, like, forehead, the ears, the chin, and stuff. Sorry, but what but gets me is... So these are pictures of... <laughs> ...happy with the way we are so living life. So the other guy does not believe he can be the father? He no, he does He don't want nothing. To, he don't even want nothing to do with it. He goes back and forth, Your Honor. I'm not even gonna lie. I've, I've heard over the last couple of months different things. You know, he was wanting to, and then he didn't want to, and then other people told Tell him that it is that it you know he needs to get What was your relationship like with this other guy? Well, we only know each other for like almost a year, and then he came over one night and went to hang out. We hung out, and it led into more than that. Thinking, oh yeah, I'm having a baby, you know, and then I go to the hospital. And I find Before out. Before we get into that, that's baby. kind of funny how she, Miss Taylor, says that he came over. The dude's trying hard not to get his hopes up, and she's a little too scared of what the results would be because of what it would mean for her daughter's future. And it wasn't, I don't, I didn't, it didn't add up to me because I thought it took a month. You had to be pregnant a month before your missed period in order to be free to be pregnant. So you're saying you, you had just had sex with the other guy four or five days before you found out you were pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. So you thought maybe I was already pregnant yes. and that would have been by Mr. Runnels. Right. But because of the medical condition, you thought, yes. you don't, you, that's why you don't know. Yeah, because I don't want to say that it is his kid and then I don't want her growing up like I, I grew up with no father. So <laughs> I want her to have the best future she can have. <laughs> I don't want my daughter to have no father. And I don't want the best for her. I want her to have an outstanding childhood. I want her to go to college, graduate, you know, everything. And she can't do that without having her father. She needs a father to be able to have a shoulder to cry and mommy's not around. I just feel like if she had, if she actually know who, know who her real dad is. When she gets 18, she won't hate me as much either. His medical condition doesn't exactly affect his fertility because the problems with the urethra, not the testes. For those of you following along at home, that's a problem with his pee-pee shoot as opposed to his grippy balls. There's still a bit of a chance that he could father a child, though. There's a chance that the kid may not be his. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Runnell, you are her father. Yes. Wow. That's awesome. A man brings his ex to court claiming she's trying to pin her baby on him. Classic move, Sheila. He claims the kid looks nothing like him. The mother, however, has a different story to tell. The logical father of Miss Kirby's 11-month-old son, Caden. You claim her accusations are causing trouble in your relationship and you are certain the results will clear your name. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Kirby, you are positive your son was conceived during your sexual relationship with Mr. Johnson and you say your son struggled with health issues and you need Mr. Johnson to step up and be a father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Johnson, Johnson, you claim Miss Kirby is causing issues in your life. Explain. Yes, Your Honor. She's trying to pin a child on me that ain't mine. And she's causing problems in my current relationship. Uh, how am I causing issues in your current relationship when you just called to me yesterday? So what are you talking about, sir? I'm not trying to keep up with you. I just wanted to know, is this really happening? Honestly, it's a pretty sad story. But that should be motivation for him to be there for the kid. 
He's not exactly stated his doubts yet, and he's confirmed that they planned the baby. So what's stopping him from making the plunge? I would never do that because I Literally, made bad what? decisions. You're not taking care of Kato. Because it's not are. mine. It ain't my baby. That baby don't look nothing like me. Um, I'm like, he like. How did you two meet? Well, Your Honor, he was working um, at this job, and then we had a blackout. Why so, would I talk, talk sexual to you because, when I'm dealing with someone? Wait, what, what was she saying? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was. <laughs> <laughs> Jer Jerome said, I want to know. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. That's what she was talking about. Oh. That don't mean right. I was trying to lay down with you. Yes, you were. So why, why did we just change numbers? Well, damn, that changes things. I mean, if she was being, you know, a sperm receptacle for another dude and she admits to it, maybe the plaintiff isn't the father after all. Because I wanted to be clear, am I this father, the, am I the father of this baby? Oh, you were taking it one step further because as you stated in your earlier testimony, you're not gonna play around. I don't know, I guess she sees that I'm gonna be around, that I'm gonna help her take care of this child. She wanted me to be, be in around? this child. How you gonna be around? You haven't life. done nothing for, from Caden since he been here. Yes, because you were saying this was, this, it of wasn't mine. Of course I told you what, he wasn't chose because you I, wasn't gonna do nothing and I didn't want to deal with you. You were pregnant? Yes. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, because I did the calculation. We had since June, July 10th, and this the round of time that I could see Kaden. You know, despite the situation, I'm not really a big fan of how the plaintiff's handling it. Now, he only gives excuses and he never takes any kind of action to ensure that the kid's okay. And so when you got in contact with Mr. Johnson, were you hoping he'd respond? Yes. But he didn't, and that's hurtful. So what's it been like raising Kaden on your own? It's been hard, but... I mean, when you say it's been hard, talk to the court about the struggles. Um, my baby has health issues. Um, he has a G tube, so we back and forth from different doctors, ENT, um, G tube clinic, all that. And he's also a bino. Oh. So do you feel like that's one of the reasons Mr. Johnson is yes. not believing? Yes. Because of his albinism? Yes. Excuse me, Your Honor. I didn't even know that this child was albino. And plus, no one's in my family albino. Has no, no trait of it. Medically, albinism is usually from both parents. So if the genes are recessive in both parents, there's a pretty high chance that the kid's going to be albino. I mean, it's not like we're born knowing our genetic makeup, so their presumption is stupidly wrong. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. <laughs> Infidelity and a past medical condition bring a man and his mother to court to search for answers regarding the paternity of his ex-girlfriend's daughter. You and your mother say Ms. Rawlings' mind games have wreaked emotional havoc on your family and you are 100% positive you are. As he himself told you, he cannot have children. You say Mr. Rawlings and his mother are two desperate people who convinced themselves Mr. Kidd is your son's father and you intend to prove them wrong today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Kidd, why are you so convinced you are Nathaniel's father? Well, Your Honor, when this first started off... Found out she was pregnant. I was away about a month after. I went away after, a month after she found out she was pregnant. Okay. She explained it so simply, yet the situation is super messy. So basically, she was taking baby batter from two dudes, and the pregnancy is the result of one of them. Now, the other guy's the person she was in a relationship with while the plaintiff was the one that she was living off of. So, how often were you with Mr. Kidd and how often were you with the other guy? Pretty much going back and forth because I was staying with him and... Did you tell him, Ms. Rawlings, that he was Nathaniel's biological father? No, ma'am. You never told him that? No, ma'am. You just told him you were pregnant when and I then somehow out... he assumed he was the father? When I found out I was pregnant, Mr. Kidd told me himself that he has some type of rare form blood disease and that me and his child would die if I was yeah. pregnant by him. Oh, he had a rare blood disease. If she's RH positive and doesn't get the necessity shot during the pregnancy, it could prevent her from having future children or that child could pass away. Talk about a proud grandma. Now, if we're taking it by looks alone, they do look a little bit similar and I can see what she might have seen. And you really believe, as you look at those pictures, that's your grandson. Yeah. And as we take a look at the second picture, <laughs> Mr. Kidd is a teen and Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has my lip. If Mr. Kidd can't see the moments that he's missing, at least his mom will be able to have him and his family has some story, some story to tell. Yes. Just in and, case. And I completely understand that. And, and it's 
truly a beautiful sentiment. But as you stand here at the defendant podium, you say you know Mr. Kidd is not your child's biological father. Yes, ma'am. It's a manipulation tactic. That's yeah, it, it, it was as long as you were giving her what she wanted and needed at the time, it was okay. And my son. And as I sent her picture, she's like, yes, I believe it's Kevin's. It's Kevin's. It's gotta be. What's really weird here is that she's playing both sides when it's convenient for her. And honestly, it's not fair to the people who are building relationships with the kid because she can just leave whenever it's convenient for her. Video chats every day, speak every day, text every day. Miss Jenkins, Please you don't. said you had the baby for a while. What do you mean by that? She, she was going through a situation and got kicked out of where she lived because her choice of men are not just greatest, I guess, in the world. He wasn't safe. She wasn't safe. She was trying to get her life together. She gave me the baby for a period of time. With a hand How long? I had him for a month and a couple days. The grandmother wants the kid, but her son doesn't based on the presence of a disease that he claims precludes him from having babies. But it didn't preclude him from doing the dirty, am I right? Anyway, the infection he claims he has doesn't necessarily cause infertility. Only a small percentage end up with infertility. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Kidd, you are the father. <laughs> The saddest thing about betrayal is that it comes from those that you love and trust the most. Now get ready to bear witness to the ultimate test of relationships and cases where a woman left a man and went back to her husband while he was in the hospital fighting for his life. These are the worst betrayals on paternity court. It's your honor. Ms. Forrest, you and your husband are here today desperate to put an end to this drama. You say you have no doubt your daughter's biological father is indeed your husband. After two years of waiting, the day's finally here. He claims that the defendant left him for dead only to find out once he was out of a coma that she was pregnant and the baby could be his or her husband's. That's definitely a lot to take in after coming out of a coma. I had got a phone call saying that she was pregnant. I heard it from my aunt first, but oh. on my way to Illinois with my dad, she had called me and told me that it was a possibility that Elena was my child. She told you a possibility? Yes, ma'am. So that means she was admitting that she also had slept with other people? Yes, ma'am. Did you think the other person was just her husband? At the time, no, Your Honor. You thought there were other possible? Yes, Your Honor. No. And you why would just... you think that? She... Why would you have reason to think that? Because she was working at the time, and some of her check would be coming up missing every time she would get paid. No. And so no. what did you suspect? Because something was missing out of her check? She would get off at 10 o'clock. It would take at least 15 minutes to get home, but she would come in at 11 to 11.30. It took about 45 minutes to get from where so I was working. So it was missing time and missing money. Yes, Where she was MIA. Yes, now, from, All right. where she, from where she worked at, and I know for a fact, it took 45 minutes to get from her work the, to no, the house. That's a lie. And at the time, while he was in bed on life support, she reconciled with her husband. She claimed that she had tried to see him, but his mother didn't let her. Well, there was definitely some feelings involved. I mean, she'd gotten back with her husband while he was fighting for his life. I loved Mr. Webb at the time, but we were... You loved him? Well, I mean... I... Yeah. So when you My realized you were pregnant... When, when exactly did you realize you were pregnant? The middle of September. That is All right, right. Your Honor. Because I didn't know at the time I was pregnant. So, Mr. Webb, how did you find out she was pregnant? She had called me the day that I got out of the hospital. I was on my way to Illinois with my dad. I got a phone call. We had a discussion. She said that I may be the father, but then again, I may not be because she was back with Mr. Forrest. I was there with her at the doctor's office, so it was the middle of September when she found out. It was in August whenever she found out that she no. was pregnant. No, it was not. So there's not a true. month discrepancy. You say September, you say August. Yes, Your Honor. So when you got the news, did you immediately think you're the father? Well, she had told me ahead of time that I may not be the father. There was a chance that I was the father. So now, what makes you stand in court today, Miss Forrest, and say that your husband is definitely the father? I have counted back the times from when she was born nine months back, and it takes it to the week that I was only sleeping with him. Me and Mr. Webb are already over with. With this close proximity, I'm surprised she's sure who the father is. In her defense, the kid looks just like her husband, and she takes after him, but looks don't always do it. The difference in time is also all the part of the same window of conception. Why wasn't he there for her? The reason <clears throat> I have not been there, Your Honor, 
I had got an email on Facebook from my aunt that Miss Forrest had had Elena. So you got news that the baby was born. You didn't hear from Miss Forrest herself. No, Your no, Honor, I, not at you, first. You heard through your family. Yes, Your Honor. I, I messaged his mother on Facebook and told her what hospital I was going to be at, where, where I was going to be, when I was going to the hospital and everything. Him or his family, knew, nobody showed nobody up. Nobody showed so up. So question, no. you, me you messaged him I messaged his on mother. Facebook, his family, to let them know, but why do that if you know for certain that Mr. Forrest, your husband, is the child's father? Just in case that he did come back being the father, he could say that he wasn't there for the birth. He okay. wasn't there. I so had the a difficult truth labor. Is, even you had doubt. At first in my pregnancy, yes, yes, Your Honor. Now, just when you think you heard it all, it appears that she's afraid that if he gets to see the child, he might run off with her, and there's nothing she can do to get her back. Well, that's the issue right there. She admits that she's been blocking him from seeing her and not the other way around. If you informed his family because you believed it was a possibility he could be the father, proved, why wouldn't you give an him an opportunity to see the baby? He proved he didn't care about not he wants there. it. When, when she told him, he told her he did not care. Well, I have so therefore, said that you're he ain't there for I have years. been in tears for the last two years trying to meet my daughter, and she has never let me once when talk I called, to her or see her. When I talked I have to him, I told him to I was pregnant. A fake Facebook account just to see pictures of Elena. I can't get past why you would not just allow him to see her if you thought it was a possibility that he could be her They have all been under For two his years. Heart. He's never wanted to meet any. He wants me to come 45 minutes from where I live to his mother's house. I'm not comfortable going a long with my daughter to his house. For 45 house. minutes? You're not comfortable going with you to see? Not alone, and he's always wanted me to come to his mother's house. No, Your Honor, I have planned to meet her in Dyersburg, Tennessee, which is a big town, just so I could meet Elena out in public. In his case, he was even putting in the effort, even with the fact that he wasn't sure he was the father. With tears in his eyes, he stated that he's really hurt because he feels like he's missed out on two years. Mr. Forrest really needs to take it easy. He made it clear that he still wouldn't be allowed to see her until the DNA test results were out. It has been determined by this court that her biological father is Mr. Webb. A man discovers his former lover is pregnant on social media, but she doesn't lead him to believe that he's a potential father until after she gives birth. He claimed that she threatened to put him on child support, so he wants to prove that he's not the father before she can try. She know that baby ain't mine. That's like she just called me last night talking about some would you be mad if he wasn't yours. Oh. What? Oh, that's a lie, though. That's a lie. I never said any of that. Okay, let <laughs> me try to translate this. When you were on the phone, he was trying to give you the one-up that it may not be yours. This one-up that she should have gave me from the day he was born. Not now. So take me back. Before we get to that point, how did you all even meet? It was just we were out. She was with her people. I was with mine. It's like we just linked. I seen this some years later. I got a reputation for being loose. Come on now, ain't nobody got time for this. Okay, but you didn't even know me though, so how would you know right. I know you. You don't know me. Okay. So wait you're a minute, what you're around. saying is, is you had mutual friends. That's how you met? Yes. And then it turned into a sexual relationship between the two of you. Y yes, but we only, we only had sex three or four times together, that's it. And he told me while we were having sex that he wanted me to have his baby. Uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. Your Honor, she's a lie. He was scrolling on social media, and he saw a picture of her pregnant, which he liked. She didn't say anything to him. He finally heard that the child could potentially be his when he was born. He was at his house when he got a call from his mother saying some girl was at her house with a baby. I'm still a baby. What you mean, baby? That's how I feel. I'm like, man, you got me messed up. I ain't got no kids. And that is the first time you've ever heard about Jaden. Your mom calls you and says, it's a girl over here with a baby. Man, get over here. I come over there, she gone. The baby laid in my mama's arm. My mama got attached to the baby. And just that quick? Just that quick. Now I'm in but a hard, now I'm in a hard spot stuck under a rock because my family done got attached to this baby. I don't know. I just can't drag him out their life like that. He's already in it. Wait, he just got dropped off. Right. <laughs> my point exactly. That's how quick she fell in love with the baby. She told she Miss Canterbury to leave the baby there with her. She knew from the start that he was Jaden's. She said that Jaden looked how like... How old was Jaden when you left the baby with his mom? Uh, he was probably that, like a month old. Man, 
That, yes. Right. Exactly. A month old. Exactly. But now he's two years old. Yeah, almost About three. About to be three. Almost three, yep. <laughs> May I speak, Your Honor? Please. Yes. I have something to say. You know this baby was my baby, or you claim it to be my baby. If you had a baby and you thought a man was your potential's baby father, once you let him know whether he is or he not, you would and say something and you would and let I him did. know, oh, it's a potential. You could be. He was so sure he wore a condom because according to him, he woke up with it on. Although he admitted to not using protection the third time, the whole timeline still doesn't lead to what ultimately is determined to be the window of conception. The conception window would have been between September 2nd and September 6th, and the most probable time of sex would be between August 30th and September 6th. Judge, so, I told you. so let's go and back to your calendar, Mr. Cooper. It's off. You just explained it. I couldn't say no. And better. you claim during that particular sexual encounter, you wore a condom. I sure did the first two times. Nope. Not the third we time. Didn't not have, in October. We didn't have I did. I'm not gonna lie. I had, a few, I had a few drinks. You got caught you slipping. Up more than I, a few. I, I was more than slipping. I was falling. I don't know what to say, Judge. She stated that this had happened in August, but August appears not to be on his exhibit, and she claims this is because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't believe it could be in August because that was when the child was born, but that he wasn't with her till September. Jaden was made in August. I ain't touched back down to Toledo to September. Do the math, add it up. You just did it. You okay. Just it. You can say what you want, but I don't care. I really know the truth. So, All these people don't know the truth, but I know Ms. the truth. Ms. Canterbury, I need to ask. So, obviously, Mr. Cooper has not been stepping up. Nope, not at all. Doing anything for nope. Jaden? Nope, nothing. Who's been Jaden's father My figure? boyfriend, Casey. So, your boyfriend has yes. had to step up and be a father figure to Jaden? Yes, he's... We've been together... <laughs> we've been together since before Jaden was one years old. So, he's been here. He's taken care of him financially. He's been here, taught him things. He's been the only father figure in his life. They're very close. Now, Your Honor, may I say something? Now, I just sat here and told you my mama got attached to that baby, right? I just said that, right? So you think I'm gonna disappoint my mama even though I feel that doubt? I'm not about to have my mama look at me because she ain't raised that type of man. Whether I do or I don't know, that's why we're here to find out the day which I need to find out. If he turns out not to be his, she believes he'll be fine without a father as he's got her. She admits she knows where the other potential father is, but sadly, he's not it too. Well, that's just sad, but at least we now know there's another possible father. Mr. Cooper, you are the father. Like I said, like I said, like I said. Yeah. That's what I thought, that's what I thought. A man from Louisville, Kentucky, recently discovers that he might not be related to his father. He comes to paternity court for answers with his mom standing by his side. I get a call about 3 o'clock in the morning. My mama called and told me that uh, the person she told me was my daddy and well, my father, that this gentleman was, and to go online and look him up. And this is what your mother tells you? Yes. What are you thinking? All kind of things. I mean, she was like, don't be mad at her or whatever. A lot of things ran through my mind. Like what? I thought it was a joke, actually. Honestly, I thought she was playing. Really? Yeah. Because that was so far outside of your realm of thinking. Yeah. And so, Ms. Cooper, what made you make that call at 3 a.m.? I mean, this has been building up in me, Yana, for a while. I mean, it's not like the first time either I tried to get in touch with Mr. Newby. I just had no way to get in touch with Mr. Newby. And it was, it's just been weighing on, on my heart and my mind. And it's something I thought my son deserved to know. So, at 3 in the morning, you just said, this is it? Yes, yes, Your Honor. You kept the secret yes. for 34 years. Yes, Your Honor. When you made the call, did you think your son would be able to receive the news or you just felt like you couldn't hold it anymore? I mean, I really didn't know how Dante was going to take it, but it was something I had to get off of my chest. At the time, it was only her friend that she had told. It was time to go back to school over the summer and she gained weight. Her mom was buying school clothes and she figured something wasn't right because she'd always been a small person, but she was going two sizes up. He was like, this is not right. I mean, and she asked me questions like, was I messing with little boys and everything? And I told her no, I mean, but she figured out that, oh, I was pregnant too. And so when she said, were you messing with little boys? You said, no, it comes out. What happens the day she finds out you're really pregnant? In my eighth month, 
she took me to the doctor and when I had my exam and he took, came back and he told my mom, yes, ma'am, she's pregnant and she's very, very pregnant. And you didn't go to the doctor and your parents didn't know until you were eight months pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. At that time, I'm sure she asked you who the father was. It was another, like, childhood friend that I went to a dance with and she just knew me and Mr. Newby to be just as friends, but this other guy I went to the dance with, she just assumed that he was the father and that's what she said it, and that's what it was. I got a message on Messenger. I was friends on, with her on Facebook, and I got my messenger popped up, and they looked on there, and they said, you're not going to believe this. This is your child, real talk, and with a picture of Dante on it. And I said, what? And then I text her back, and she didn't say nothing. And I said, you can't drop a bombshell on me like that and don't elaborate. And I waited until she finally responded. And I said, does he know this? I said, because how could I be the father? I've never seen you pregnant. When he got the message, he was stunned, so he kept asking her questions, like how he could be the father since he never saw her pregnant. They'd always kissed and messed around with each other back in the day, even a family member of his was involved. They were basically young teens experimenting by sleeping with each other unprotected. So you're saying that there was also a sexual relationship between Miss Cooper and another family member of you? I don't really recall that though, Your Honor, but okay, if... I don't remember that. So, Mr. Newby, you still feel in disbelief at this point. You see pictures of Mr. Cooper. Are you now curious? What do you do at this point? I mean, this is news so 34 years I later. I my family members exactly that right there and asked them what did they think. And what did they say? Everybody said he looks like you. <laughs> it's interesting. You all both have that toothpick sitting out the side <laughs> of your mouth. That's what I'm laughing at. Well, it's, it, well it, I say that because my father does that too with the toothpick and it just goes down the line. It's amazing, but a lot of men do that. But it, it, when you look at that picture, that's what makes you laugh, the way you're holding that toothpick. Yeah. She felt like she stole something from both of them, hence why it weighed so heavy and she couldn't hold it any longer. Oh, I would love my dad. And now it's kind of hurt real bad. No, I understand. I think, when I think about it. Mr. Cooper, when you hear Mr. Newby talk about the things he feels like you missed, what do you feel? I really don't know how to feel about the situation. I mean, I feel his pain, you know, me being a father, you know what I'm saying? I can relate to the Miss House situation. But I mean, not having a father, so it really don't, you know, I don't deal with this 34 years. Something I want to know, you know, for the sake of my kids, you know, and, you know, start from right now and move forward. Mr. Newby brought his oldest daughter to court as a witness, and she really doesn't know whether or not Mr. Cooper is her father's son. But seeing her father's pain hurts because they've been through so much with their family and he missed out. If he's determined to be her father's son, she stated that her family would be willing to accept him. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Newby, you are not the father. Welcome back, everybody, to some more drama on paternity court. So let's get going and kick this thing off. Okay, so check this out. Her best friend texted her boyfriend that he's not the father, and now a Michigan woman is in court to prove paternity and save her relationship. Save your family, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Osborne, you admit to being a father figure in Paisley's life, but say her biological father. Well, if there's allegations of cheating, it usually comes with a reason. It's really hard to make stuff up. Even in terms of having trust issues, there's usually a reason behind it. But in this case, there's a lot at stake. Both have this doubt in the back of our mind. We don't speak of it, but it's there. We know it. Um, and we were both, we just both had like a look of fear in our eyes. Like, what did we do? For a baby to scare people, you definitely know there's gotta be a big problem. Babies are usually bundles of joy that sew relationships together, but in this case, it's brought them apart and dealt them with a big dose of confusion. Osborne? Yeah, Your Honor, because the day before she found out she was pregnant, I received text messages while I was at work from her best friend stating that she might be pregnant and that it's not my- Aww, well isn't that a really good best friend that goes out there and leaks secrets because of their broken conscience. I mean, how can the best friend tell though? Isn't it all based on the time of conception? I thought I'd let you know. Also, she's been blank guy two out in blank and guy three. 
There are only a few reasons a best friend might tell secrets to her friend's boyfriend. One is to sabotage, and the other is if it's the truth. That sort of information doesn't just come out of nowhere, but what does the plaintiff have to say about it? They're sleeping with. She did to me what I did to her. So it's out of spite. It's all out of spite. Oh, so you did this to her once upon a time. Once upon a time, something similar. Well, as I said, it could be sabotage, and we're going to take her word for it. I mean, it is her testimony. But I can only imagine how the defendant felt in that instance. It must have been crushing. I guess the funny thing is, is that it might have been a joke to him until he found out she was pregnant. But with doubts as massive as that, he chose to stay. There is a chance that she is my child, and I grew up without a dad, and I, I didn't want her to grow up without a father. Okay, so he was at the birth and cut the cord, and when he tried to settle his doubts, he asked for a DNA test. But apparently, the hospital didn't offer a free DNA test anymore, so he decided to sign the birth certificate. Well, at least he didn't do it immediately. I embarrassed My you. My friends were in the did room. You, did you see the messages? I embarrassed you. I don't care. If it comes out that she's Why not did my you father. pull my leg? Why did you drive me to the hospital? Why were you there through the whole thing? Okay, so Judge Lake decides to invite the best friend to court to get to the bottom of the situation. Judge Lake asks her about it, and she doesn't seem to back down. She tried to mess up my relationship and things in my personal life, so out of spite. I told her boyfriend at the time what she had been doing. So do you have any proof that she was sleeping with other men? Yes, she told me. As they always say, the truth will always prevail. The ex-best friend brought the evidence to court. Messages from the plaintiff to her telling her about the people she's had sexual encounters with. She responds, yes, girl, I've been up all night. He's still sleeping. Another exchange between you and the plaintiff that's if she still denies it it shows that she has no decency she should just tell the truth her excuse is that she had a lot going on at the time i mean get some shame it's free sleep and go to another guy's house i can say anything with i'm mad when i'm mad i can write anything over a facebook oh so message. now you're saying you're angry i was probably angry at him yes that's so i know that you slept with multiple people and attempted to sleep with a fourth. All right, so the best friend was even there with her when she was cheating with one man specifically, so she's kind of an addition to the problem. Every time she got a chance, she would go to one guy's house in particular, and if he didn't answer, there was another one and then if he didn't answer, wow. there was one that I wow. helped or introduced her to, and then she would go to his house. All of those allegations, and she just blatantly denies them. Honestly, I don't know who to believe, the salty best friend or the alleged cheater. I can't do stuff with the light off, no, don't even, okay? I, I can actually do whatever I want. You did. Well, with all the back and forth of the cheating situation, they moved on to the conception dates to try to figure out a link between the dates and the messages. Window of conception would be May 13th to May 19th. It was May 17th, 2017, when you sent the messages. What she hasn't figured out is that even though he has doubts, choosing to stay when there's a chance he's the father is the best decision for all of them, and that would have taken a lot of sacrifice. A lot of inner turmoil, and he stayed through it all. A little in the sky is falling. Like, he shouldn't have any doubt because he framed an ultrasound or he showed up to support you. That's not the point. He already testified that he did it. There's a lot at stake here. If he's not the father, it would mean she's been lying this entire time. And even if he is the father, it doesn't mean she wasn't cheating on him. Are the father. I really hope that they figure out that they don't have to stay together just because they have a kid together. It's just going to cause more chaos for the child who's going to have to grow up around spite and hate and it's not going to be fair to her. Okay, so no one can tell if she actually cheated or not, but if she did, it's kind of a shame that she's not comfortable and she's too scared to tell the truth when it really matters. Anyway, on to the next case. Betrayal is the theme of this case as the plaintiff comes to court to help to prove to the defendant that her child is his. It starts with the plaintiff having a relationship with the defendant and conceiving a child with him. But then her best friend of sixth grade went behind her back to marry and have a child um, bum, bum, with the same guy. Scandal. Mrs. Matthews was once your best friend since sixth grade. 
But then you told her you were pregnant by Mr. Matthews and she immediately conceived a child with him and then married him. This had not known quite extensively for sleeping around. Therefore, Mr. Matthews has his concerns about being the son's biological father. He wants to sever his relationship with her. So at first you were I in a relationship. Yes, but she was at the house where we slept together at. And so she knew you were in. Okay, so she acknowledged that that was their only encounter. He then went to her best buddy after that. If the connection she had with them was that superficial, is it accurate to state that she was betrayed? Well, there's a reason people put a band sign on their friend's ex, even if it's just a sexual encounter. Been be me, and, me and my wife been best friends before that. Your Honor, he said they was cousins because he had another girlfriend at the house where they was at. If that's true, that shows why she never thought she was a threat and got caught off guard. That was one heck of a move. She must have been so ignorant about the whole thing. That still counts as a betrayal. So why today are you so convinced that he's the father? It's been times when she, uh, can you take me here? Can you take, it's always been about money, finances. She's a gold digger. So wait, now she's a gold digger? She did admit to sleeping with other guys, but believes the pregnancy has to be his. He claimed that he never knew about that, so he's got no reason to believe anything she says. Here's another reason he has doubts. If somebody's saying they're having your, I'm supposed to be the father, you're gonna have them witness to be at the birth. Why, why, why ain't she telling me, okay? How am I supposed to call him and tell him? Her ex best friend had a lot to say. She confessed that she slept with Mr. James as a mistake. However, things took a turn after that. Isn't that how they always start? As a mistake? <laughs> I don't believe that one bit. How about you? I didn't intend to fall in love, have a baby, and, and marry James. That was not my intention at all, and to hurt my best friend. Yeah, but she has all this going on, and she was my everything. Terry was my heart. I was there for Terry through all her stuff, and no I was matter there for what. Her. So she still betrayed her dearest friend, regardless of this. She not only had sex with him, but also got married to him. She's currently on trial, denying having a child with the same man who betrayed her. That's just disgusting and chilly. So what type of friend is that? No matter what I did and what I did wrong, she was supposed to have my back no matter what. And she still and I was, and him. I was always there. And to this day, I still, I, and what she don't understand, I and still- It got confusing when Mr. Matthews admitted to getting both of them pregnant at the same time. That must have been really wild and maybe even intentional. Tana, your best friend, what did you think? To tell you the truth, Your Honor, and I told her straight up, you know what? You can have that, because I never wanted him. Yeah, so what was the big deal? Okay, so like, if she doesn't want him, what's the big deal? It's either she didn't mean that or she just doesn't want her friend having a relationship with him. She's demanding loyalty and feelings trump loyalty sometimes. That's not too much to ask, unfortunately. He called and asked for my son. That's not I true. have to call and ask James, do he want his son? Otherwise, he don't see my son unless he goes to his mama house. That ain't, that ain't true. She revealed that her son is growing up and he's starting to ask some questions. When your kid starts to ask questions, that's when you get desperate. But it's really sad the boy's got to go through all of this. And it's bad when a four-year-old can come to you and say, Mama, why my daddy don't want me? That doesn't make sense. Well, obviously, He's an innocent child. He didn't do nothing to Jay. They really need to learn how to get along for the sake of their son. For them to do so, he's got to accept that he's the biological father, and that's why they're in court. This was the 15th. There's no way possible it could be pointing to me. Being a woman and knowing a little bit about that biology, that you out of the clear. <laughs> When the kid was born, it was revealed that he made some promises that he couldn't keep. Our guy here probably got carried away by the miracle of childbirth. Don't make promises you can't keep, buddy. All you're doing is breaking hearts. He was sitting there watching him, looking at him sleep, all this. Then he told me himself, Portia, I'm going to take care of my baby. And I'll call myself and put on my cell phone child support, which my mama dialed the child support number. James talked to them himself. All right, so he also voluntarily signed the birth certificate and put himself on child support. I mean, that's commendable. Shows he's a responsible guy, at least to a point. 
But if you're going to turn around and deny all that, then maybe don't do something so stupid. He ended up getting with Terry, then all of a sudden, you got some oh, he don't want to pay child support. So why is, why is oh, thing so let me ask Only you two something. of my kids got different daddy. The other four got all the same daddy while he's trying to put somebody on spot. How old but are you Joe, with that many children? It don't matter what I got. It's, you don't take you care of them. Got... Okay, well, needless to say, he denied all of that. They got into an argument about it, prompting Judge Lauren Lake to ask for some order. The whole thing is just a giant mess. He's mad I'm at the not. fact that I don't want him and never no, have want him. No, I don't, don't want, want you to do nothing, because okay. you never have. Oh. I've been having Jamari by myself, and I'm gonna keep having him by what myself. To me, his doubts seem valid, since she was sleeping with two other guys at the time, too. Judge Lauren Lake pointed that out to her, and she had nothing to say to that. So, let's check out those results. You are the father. Right. Thank you. Right. I told you. I hate you. I promise. Throughout the case, it's pretty clear that the plaintiff was more hurt about the betrayal than the man rejecting her child. This is more of a case between her and her best friend. He's just the intermediary. But they have to figure out a way to make this work so the kid will grow up around loving people who've learned to forgive one another. On to the next betrayal. A love triangle between two best friends has brought this woman to court. This woman believes one of two friends is the father of her two-year-old son. You are caught in the middle of two lifelong best friends because you slept with them both and now have no idea which is two-year-old Cameron's biological friend. Mr. Santilli has revealed that it's taken him about two years to mend his broken heart after finding out she slept with his best friend. Yikes. Okay, his woes continued when she dropped the bomb that his best friend might also be the biological father of their son. Ooh, drama llama. Down, it's been over a year and a half. I had to convince my four-year-old how he doesn't have a younger brother no more. I had to convince myself that he wasn't my son. She didn't take accountability. She revealed that while he was mourning his grandfather's death, he broke up with her over a text message saying he was going to bring her down. That's pretty cold. He passed away was the day his best friend told me that really he had broken up with me for the girl upstairs. And so this is the best friend you ended up sleeping with. Yes. So how did- Well, that ended in her not knowing who the father is. I always thought there was a code, right? That if you have a best friend, they don't sleep with your girl or any girl you've ever dated. He just lost a person that meant everything no. to him. No, I'm because his ex. he- Maybe sleeping with his best friend wouldn't be the no. best idea? Absolutely not. The best friend, Mr. Zara, was escorted into the courtroom, and oh boy, oh boy, he had some shocking revelations to spill. He told me to do it. He told me specifically in his exactly. house, yo, I don't care about this girl. I have another girlfriend. He just sat there and lied and oh, said, so them words never left yes, my lips. Yes, they did. I was saying, well, right, yes. You said they are adults. They As my brother, you should have known better. It don't matter. All right, well, I don't think that's a good excuse. Judging from the circumstances, he might have not been in the right frame of mind. When she got pregnant, he denied it from the onset and didn't believe the kid was his. So, what changed? Said, Yo, bro, Kayla just told me that you had sex with her, and I denied it. And Kayla came out right on the porch and said, yeah, we did. He's lying to you. And the only reason why I denied it to him was because his grandfather was sick. That was so. So he sits here and says he had no so, idea. Hold, hold on. How, how, how did you say this after my grandfather was sick? If he was didn't sleep together until my grandfather died. But oh! four months after his friend and his girlfriend both made him promises that the child was his, he expressed his desire for them to be together for the kid via text to her. Most of the time, relationships forged around a kid have never worked out well. About the umbilical cord, I signed the birth certificate. This looks like a beautiful, happy day. Do you know they slept together at no. all? Yes, he does. No, yes, he does. His doubts came back when the child was a couple of months old and he believed he looked like Mr. Zara. Other people around him weren't helping matters either. She didn't just say he's not yours. She, she, said it, she said it ruthlessly. She said, how do you feel you're holding your best friend's kid, you loser? Which is why I snapped, what? which is why I snapped, which is what led to my incarceration. Well, dang, I can't believe he went to jail on this matter. That's just a terrible thing to say to someone already on the edge. And by her response, you know, she doesn't care about him at all. He left for another girl. So I am a single adult and okay. I can do what I want. So the next morning after you went to jail from this incident. And it looks like the boy now refers to Mr. Zara as his father rather than the other man who was incarcerated. 
those are the specific effects that paternity disputes have. They've officially transferred their confusion onto the vulnerable kid. They have another baby together too. We have a daughter together. Which we? Me and Mr. Zara, and I have another son. Okay, so what on earth is going on here? What could have possibly happened that would lead her to be in this position? It's all just a giant disaster, but I'm glad they came to fraternity court because they really need to get this over with. Dino shouldn't be responsible for a child that's not his. Behind court doors, this is vicious. We do nothing no, but it's vicious fight with the As for Mr. Zara, he's got no doubts. He thinks the child's his. Said he looked like him and also everybody around him told him the same thing. He's also posted him on his social media as his baby. It's a, it's a strong possibility he's not, but reality still hasn't sunk in yet. It took me almost a year and a half to stop crying over that baby, and now if he comes out mine, I'm going to have to deal with all that. Man, he has really gone through it. Well, hopefully the parties get their peace. And it's time for the results. That Cameron's biological father is Mr. Santilli. <laughs> The pain of all of those years and also ending up in jail due to it? I can only imagine what's going on in his mind right now. You okay? Stand up, sweetie. Talk to me. <laughs> Tears of joy, relief. In this episode, a man has spent years in jail and may return. His freedom hangs on the results of this case. Ms. Lapine, you say you'd always believe the defendant, Mr. Lapine, was your dad. Yes, Your Honor. Then, just months ago, at a family dinner, you were told by a family member that he's not your biological father. Mr. Lapine, you say you've spent years in jail for unpaid child support. Yes, Your Honor. Tomorrow, you have yet another court date. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you could be locked up again if today's results prove you are indeed Miss Lapine's biological father. Here's how she found out he might not be her biological father. We was at a family dinner, and we was all just discussing. Then family members started saying that, well, you don't know if he's your dad or not because you don't look like your dad, and he might not be your dad. Wait a minute, and wait. You do ever heard of anything like this? No, Your Honor. Oh, my goodness. What did you say? I went to another family member and asked if this was true, and they just told me that this was not the time or place to talk about it. It's Mr. Lapine's turn to speak. Four to five years in jail. Yes, ma'am. For unpaid child support. Yes, ma'am. For a young woman that calls you and then says, some family member told me you may not even be my biological father. Yes, ma'am. You actually have a court date tomorrow. 1.30 tomorrow afternoon. You could be thrown back in jail again for being behind, and yet you still don't know whether you're her biological father. True. I don't. I don't know if I'm her dad or not. After he got a call from her about the paternity doubts, he started recalling the events that led up to her conception in a bid to try to ascertain her paternity. So, after you learned her mother was pregnant, did you remember her mother being intimate with anybody else during that time? I didn't know then. I was, so, after me and her separated, I was told by friends of mine that they had slept with her and other guy, other people. Wow. He also claimed her features are nothing like his, compared to his other daughter. Ms. Lapine, do you feel like she looks... No, ma'am, she looks nothing like me. And the dark skin... But your skin, other daughter, you claim, looks like you. Dark hair, dark skin, skinny, looks identical to me. His other daughter was called to the stand. Thank you for joining she us. And your name? Jennifer Lapine. Mr. Lapine is your father. Yes. And you grew up believing Brandy was your sister. It's just been, you know, after so many years, you think something, and then it comes out, and then you see it affect everybody. It's not just me and her. You know, it's our kid. It's you know, everybody around us. It's our whole family, because this is what we thought, this is what we believe. And now all of a sudden it's like, you know, it may not be, but. She also feels Miss Brandy doesn't share any resemblance with her or her dad. This is a picture we took last week of me, my dad, and my sister. And you feel like you strongly resemble your father. Right. But Brandy does not. Right. When you look at this picture, Brandy, what do you feel? I always thought that I just got my mother's side of the genes. I always thought, you know, I look like my mom, but I always thought I had my dad's attitude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Lapine presented evidence to court that he had paid child support. Where I've been paying child support? Yeah. I'd go to the courthouse and pay. Jerome, please pass me that evidence. I would have it taken out of my paychecks and everything else. I would go to the courthouse and make them take it out of my paychecks all the time. They go back. Record 19... after record. They go back to 1998. 
Mr. Lapine's wife took the stand as a witness. And your fear is he's gonna go back to jail tomorrow if these results prove that he is Brandy's biological father. Well, and it's every time he goes, I, I lose a part of my soul. But you still find yourself in this scary situation because yes, you haven't been able to catch up on this support, so you still are in fear of getting locked up all the time. Yes, ma'am. Always. Miss Brandy said she was given the name of the man who could be her father, and she hasn't started searching for him. Yes, I have looked for this man, Bill, but there is 239 people. Oh, all Jerome, over let me see that. I would not begin to know who to start with. So you started your start. search. You yes. said, let me try to find this gentleman they've named. Yes, Your Honor. 239 from pretty much every state in the yes. United States. Yes. When she was asked how she felt about Mr. Lapine, she had this to say. It's Take your time. I know this is difficult <clears throat> because you really don't know, right? No, I don't. Tell your father how you feel. I feel upset that you weren't there for all them years. And I feel like even though I love y'all to death and I love my brothers and sisters, I feel like that you did more for them than you ever did for us. It's time for the results. In the case of Lapine versus Lapine, as it pertains to the paternity of Ms. Brandy Lapine, Ms. Lapine, Mr. Richard Lapine is not your biological father. <laughs> No matter what, still my daughter. A DNA test means jail for this man, as he is behind on child support. Ms. The Adams, now your son, Mr. Adams, is joining us via satellite from Flint, Michigan, because he's been prohibited by law enforcement from leaving your home state. And you claim he's on the verge of being arrested for back child support, and you're both with us today to prove he's not the father of the defendant's three-year-old son. The mother of Mr. Adams explains how their son got into the situation. Your Mr. Honor, my son is now facing jail because of this situation. This very moment, you're concerned that he could be arrested for failure to pay child support yes. for a child that both of you have doubts is even his child. Mr. Adams felt they never had a relationship when asked to explain the nature of their relationship. Situation. Ms. You were in a relationship with Ms. Williams. Uh, no, I really wouldn't call it no relationship. Ms. Williams felt the same way about their relationship when it came to how serious it was. I mean, you know, when we was we was young at the time, we hooked up on and off, and you know, it just so it was just an on and off thing. Yeah, it was just an on and so off. So if it thing. wasn't committed during that time, were you also sleeping with other men as well? Yes, ma'am, I was. Miss Williams is not sure he is the father. She claimed it's a possibility, and that she never outrightly claimed he is the father. When she got all right, so the doubts that Mr. Adams and his mother have, they are valid doubts. It's a possibility. I never, you know, said, oh, you are the father or you gonna take care of this baby or nothing like that. When she got pregnant, she thought it was her ex's baby. So when, when you she... got pregnant, you didn't even include Mr. Adams in this equation. No, I didn't. You thought it was your ex's. And yes, your ex yes, said, I did. well, it's mine too. And you all went through this whole process, but then you yes. had a test. It was not your ex's. So immediately then you said it was Mr. Adam. Yes. I located him and I told him it's a possibility that you may be the father. When she needed help and went to the state, she dropped his name as the father. Yes, and you gave the state his name. Yes, I did. And then he was ordered to go to court. Yes, he was. Mr. Adams, did you go to court? Uh, no, your honor. Only due to the fact that I was incarcerated, so I didn't receive any court subpoenas, anything, your honor. I was incarcerated. Mr. Adams' mother claims she overheard Miss Williams telling her son the child is not his. But the Williams other conversation came about in my very own living room while I was in the kitchen, and she and my daughter was talking, and the question came up again, was my son the father of the child? And she said no. That's Actually, a lie. So you heard listen, her say no? Yes, she said no in my living room. And she's over there talking about it's a lie, and she was in my very own living room. Miss William denies it all. Why Matter of fact, I take that back. I wasn't nine months pregnant. I was still in the middle of the pregnancy, and that's when I told you of when I was with my ex, and I thought it was my ex at the time because I was still messing with my ex. That's what the agreement was between me and my ex at the time. So you said it's not his. Yes. Why didn't Mr. Adams take the DNA test? She said it was a strong possibility. You didn't believe that? No, Your Honor. Why? Because first off, she had already told me that the baby wasn't mine. Then she named the baby after her ex-boyfriend. 
the mother provided the judge with the evidence of her arrears. Total arrears are over a thousand dollars. Over two thousand. So yeah. this situation just keeps escalating. Mr. Adams narrated how he ended up in jail for not paying child support. What happened? Basically, I was walking to the store to get some cigarettes. Police just ran our names. Now, I didn't even know I had a warrant. So I gave them my name proud, like, you know, I'm Lassiter Adams. You know, I ain't think I had no warrant. Come to find out, he come back to me like, oh, Mr. Adams, you got a warrant for child support. I'm like, what? The features of the baby were examined by the mother, who felt the child looked nothing like her son. No, it's I can't see it, Your Honor. To me, he favors his mother. Do you see it at all, Ms. Williams? Like I said, looks don't mean anything. Sometimes he do, sometimes he don't. It's time for the results. In the case of Adams v. Williams, it has been determined that Mr. Adams is not the father. A man jailed for not paying child support wants a DNA test to prove he is not the biological father. Hey everyone, when Mr. Bonner, you say Ms. Fahey's claims of paternity have led you to being arrested with $7,000 of debt for a child you claim you are being prevented from seeing. When asked how he is sure the child is not his, he gave this shocking reply. Are you so adamant that she's not your child? Well, you tell me how two white people make a brown baby. Oh! He claims that although he cheated on her, she also cheated by going to sleep with her ex. She didn't deny it. It's a 50-50 chance that she could be Brock's or the other person. Now, doing? hold on. So you do admit that you slept with Mr. Bonner and also your ex? Yes, ma'am. The child's color is one of the reasons for the paternity doubts, and she believes there is nothing to it. My mother was a dark, she was kind of dark skin complexed. She had the, the dark hair, right. the dark skin. A beautiful genetic, olive complexion Yes, and she genetics has. worked in a mysterious way. My dad was real dark. He brought pictures of his, too. It Jerome, was, let me see Mr. Bonner's pictures as well. And the boy on the left is by my mixed ex-wife. So what you're saying to the court is that in the past, your genes have shown up very strong in your kids. Correct. And you're just not understanding why yes. it didn't happen in this case, and that fuels your doubt. It was revealed that he accepted the pregnancy, but after seven months, left her to be with another woman. Even at seven when months he... pregnant, you decided you were going to leave. At that time, I was on drugs. I wanted to party life. I was messing up. I so you a... admit that you were making a mistake and Correct. messing up. You just were going down the wrong path. Yes, Your Honor. When he came to the hospital, he couldn't sign the birth certificate. Here's the reason. They would not let him no, sign no, the no. birth certificate she because said, let me I was married. He wanted well, to you sign be marrying the illegal birth immigrants. certificate. Wait now, you were married. He was married also as well. Oh. Mr. Brock asked the question the judge felt was a valid question. Since I'm 50-50 to father, why is I'm the only one hit with child support? Where was the other guy? Explain Good that Good question, okay. Ms. Faye. I, I when mean, I went to court, asked a I got, valid question, I got, okay, I got, I got paperwork right when here proving I'm $7,000 behind child support. When I went to court, Mr. Brock would later go to jail on the child support issue. He Why also, were you handcuffed? When I went to court, I moved from Orlando, which I was staying with her. They did give me a DNA test to go do to court. I did not make it that court date, so they automatically hit me as a father. I go in the courtroom, he goes, you're $7,000 behind. You're going to jail today, Mr. Bonner. He also gave a commendable speech about his life progress. Two week old Mr. baby right now with the girl I'm fixing to marry. I made my mistakes. I paid my debt. If this little child's mine, I owe her apology. What, I owe you apology, What period. about your son? I lost both my kids due to drugs, ma'am. I had party life, I had two kids, wasn't ready for kids, I made that mistake. But you know what, I've straightened my life up. I don't smoke cigarettes no more, I don't drink alcohol, I don't do drugs. I can pass any drug test right now. Mr. Brock came up to the stand as a witness. First of all, Brock has changed his life. I've pretty much raised him. Um, he's like a little brother to me. And I know he would step up to the plate to be a good father to, to this little girl. He's always wanted a little girl. Now I've seen a change in him. So you're a witness that he is doing better. Oh, definitely. It's time for the results. Of Bonner versus Fahey when it comes to three-year-old Nevaeh, Mr. Bonner, you are not her father. I'm sorry. Told you, Mancy. I'm sorry. A San Antonio, Texas woman betrayed her best friend, needs a DNA test to prove paternity of her four-year-old son. Now you claim that Mrs. Matthews was once your best friend since sixth grade, but then you told her you were pregnant by Mr. Matthews and she immediately conceived a child with him and then married him. Mr. Matthews has doubts about being the biological father of Miss Hadnot's son because she had a reputation for sleeping around. He hopes to put an end to his connection with her. You were I in a relationship. Yes. 
with Mr. Matthews? It wasn't a relationship. It was just like a friendship. And then we ended up sleeping together. But she was at the house where we slept together at. She revealed they were just together just that one time. After that, he moved to her best friend. If the relationship he had with them is that trifling, would it be fair to say she was betrayed? Me and, me and my wife been best friends before that. Your Honor, he said they was cousins. Ma'am, both of them. Wait a minute, they told you they were cousins? Yes, she no. She said they was cousins Excuse in the me. same house because he had another girlfriend at the house where they was at. If that's true, that shows why she never thought she was a threat and got caught off guard. That was one heck of a move. She must have been so clueless about the whole thing. So why today are you so convinced that he's the father? I'm Hold not convinced. Up. I know for a fact who I slept with. I'm trying to understand. She's you always were... been after money, Your Honor. It's been times when she, uh, can you take me here? Can you take, it's always been about money, finances. She's a gold digger. Now she's a gold digger? She did admit to sleeping with other guys, but believes the pregnancy has to be his. He claimed he never knew about that so he has no reason to believe anything she says. Here's another reason he has doubts. Well, if somebody's saying they're having your, I'm supposed to be the father, you gonna have them witness to be at the birth. You calling me after somebody else, and then not her, her mama calling me, saying, oh, you have a baby boy. Why, why, why ain't she telling me, okay? How am gonna... I supposed to call him and tell him? Her best friend had a lot to say. She confessed she slept with Mr. James as a mistake. However, things took a turn after that. I didn't intend to fall in love, have a baby, and, and marry James. That was not my intention at all, and to hurt my best friend. Yeah, but she has all this going on, and she was my everything. Terry was my heart. I was there for Terry through all her stuff, and no I matter what. Her. That does not change the fact that she betrayed her best friend. Not only did she sleep with him, she ended up marrying him. And now she is on the stand denying her baby with the same man she betrayed her with. That's just cold. So what type of friend is that? No matter what I did, and what I did wrong, she was supposed to have my back no matter what. And she still and I was, and him. I was always there. And to this day, I still, I, and what she don't understand, I and still- It got confusing when Mr. Matthews admitted to getting both of them pregnant at the same time. That must have been really wild. Sadna, your best friend comes to you and says, I'm pregnant by the same guy too? What did you think? To tell you the truth, Your Honor, and I told her straight up, you know what? You can have that, because I never wanted him. So what was the big deal? If she doesn't want him, what's the big deal? It's either she didn't mean that, or she just doesn't want her friend having a relationship with him. She's demanding loyalty and feeling Trump's loyalty sometimes. She didn't call and ask for my son. That's not I true. have to call and ask James, do he want his son? Otherwise, he don't see my son unless he goes to his mama house. That, that ain't true. And so, Miss Hadnot, in your statement to the court, you stated that you're trying to break a cycle. You want She revealed her son is growing up and he's starting to ask some questions. The questions are really emotional. I feel bad for the boy. And it's bad when a four-year-old can come to you and say, Mama, why my daddy don't want me? Why my daddy want to be an A test for me? That doesn't make sense. Well, obviously he's an innocent child. He didn't do nothing to James or to Terry. You grew up without your father. Have my father and they really need to learn how to get along for the sake of their son. For them to do so, he has to accept he is the biological father, and that's why they are in court. Last menstrual cycle was the 15th, there's no way possible it could be pointing to me. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I don't believe, being a woman and knowing a little bit about that biology, that you out of the clear. <laughs> when the child was born, it was revealed he made some promises that he couldn't keep up with. Our guy here probably got carried away by the miracle of childbirth. Don't make promises you can't keep. He was sitting there watching him, looking at him sleep, all this. Then he told me himself, Portia, I'm going to take care of my baby, and I'll call myself and put on my cell phone child support, which my mama dialed the child support number. James talked to them himself. He also voluntarily signed the birth certificate and put himself on child support. That's commendable. Shows he's a responsible guy. But if you're going to turn around and deny all that, he should have done all that. Up getting with Terry, then all of a sudden, you got oh, he don't want to pay child support. So why is, why is oh, thing so let me ask Only you Only two of my kids got different daddies. The other four guys are all the same daddy. Why How you trying to put somebody on spot? How old but are you Joe, with that many children? It don't matter what I got. You don't take you care of them. Needless to say, he denied all that. They got into an argument about that, prompting Judge Lauren Lake to ask for some order. The whole thing is just a mess. He's mad at the 
fact that I don't want him and never no, have I, want him, he always texted me talking about, question, why you don't want me? Okay. If what I did want, I do to you? She want me to do something. No, I don't want, want you to do nothing, because okay. you never have. Okay. I've been having Jamari by myself, and I'm going to keep having him by what myself. To me, his doubts seem valid since she was sleeping with two other guys at the time, too. Judge Lauren Lake pointed that out to her, and she had no reply to that. Let's check out the results. Case of Hadnot versus Matthews, when it comes to the paternity of four-year-old Jamari Matthews Jones. Mr. Matthews, you are the father. Thank you, I told you. This is a case of a messy love triangle between two best friends. This woman believes one of two friends is the father of her two-year-old son. You are caught in the middle of two lifelong best friends because you slept with them both and now have no idea which is two-year-old Cameron's biological father. Mr. Santilli revealed it has taken him two years to mend his broken heart after finding out she slept with his best friend. However, his woes continued when she dropped the bomb that his best friend might be the biological father of their son. Down, it's been over a year and a half. I had to convince my four-year-old how he doesn't have a younger brother no more. I had to convince myself that he wasn't my son. Oh my goodness. So, Ms. Nato. She didn't take accountability. She revealed that while he was mourning his grandfather's death. He broke up with her over a text message saying he was going to bring her down passed away was the day his best friend told me that really he had broken up with me for the girl upstairs. Mm. And so this is the best friend you ended up sleeping with. Yes. So how did that happen? Well, that ended in her not knowing who the father is. I always thought there was a code that if you have a best friend, they don't sleep with your girl or any girl you dated. But I'm not saying, is there, is there any part of you that said, Hmm. He just lost a person that meant everything no, to him. No, I'm because his ex. he maybe sleeping with his best friend wouldn't be the no. best idea. Absolutely not. Because the best friend, Mr. Zara, was escorted into the courtroom, and oh boy, he had some shocking revelation to spill. Told me to do it. Away. He told me specifically in his exactly. house, yo, I don't care about this girl. I have another girlfriend. He just sat there and lied. And oh, said, so them he words never you're, left yes, my lips. Yes, they did. I was saying right yes. You said they were adults. They did. Let them as my brother, you should have known that. It don't matter. As my brother. Well, I don't think that's a good excuse. Judging the circumstance, he might not have been in the right frame of mind. When she got pregnant, he denied it from the onset and didn't believe the child was his. So what changed? Said, Yo, bro, Kayla just told me that you had sex with her and I denied it. And Kayla came out right on the porch and said, yeah, we did. He's lying to you. And the only reason why I denied it to him was because his grandfather was sick. That was so so he sits here and says he had no so, idea. Hold, hold on. How, how, how did you say this after my grandfather was sick if you didn't sleep together until my grandfather died? But oh! After four months of both his friend and his girl promising him that the child was his, he texted her that he wanted them to be together for the child. Bonding over a child has never turned out well in most cases. About the umbilical cord, I signed the birth certificate. This looks like a beautiful, happy day. And all during this time, in this photo at this time, do you know they slept together at all? No. Yes, he does. His doubts came back when the child was a couple of months old and he believed he looks like Mr. Zara. Other people around him weren't helping either. He didn't just say he's not yours. She, she, said it, she said it ruthlessly. She said, how do you feel you're holding your best friend's kid, you loser? Which is why I snapped, what? which is why I snapped, which is what led to my incarceration. It's, it's, that she is didn't, not what I said. Can't believe he went to jail on this matter. That's just a terrible thing to say to someone already on the edge. By her response, you know she doesn't care about him at all. Not even, the very to... next morning, I'm sorry, the very next morning. So the next morning after you went to jail from this incident... He took up... The child has grown up to refer to Mr. Zara as his daddy, and not the other guy that went to jail. These are the exact types of consequences that paternity issues cause. They projected their confusion on the innocent child. Cameron, your only child? No. They have another baby together, too. We have a daughter together. Which we? Me and Mrs. Zara. And I have another son. And you're not together? No. What on earth is going on here? What happened that would lead her to be in this position? It's a disaster.
I'm glad they came to paternity court. They really need to get this over with. Dino shouldn't be responsible for a child that's not his. And Mrs. R needs to know that that's his kid and to give it 110%. And hopefully all the fighting will stop because behind court doors, this is vicious. We do nothing. No, but it's vicious. Fight with this child. Mr. Zara has no doubts. He thinks the child is his. Said he looks like him, and also everybody around him told him that. He has also posted him on his social media as his baby. It's a it's strong possibility he's not, but reality still hasn't sunk in yet. It's it's not a fact. It's still up in the air. So un, until I hear either way, I'm, I'm going to be upset, whether Tommy's the father or I'm the father. It took me almost a year and a half to stop crying over that baby, and now if he comes out mine, I'm going to have to deal with all that. He has really gone through it. Hopefully the parties get their peace. Here's the results. In the case of NATO versus Santilli, Zara, when it comes to two-year-old Cameron Santilli, it has been determined by this court that Cameron's biological father is Mr. Santilli. The pain of all those years and also ending up in jail due to it. I can only imagine what's going on in his mind. You okay? Stand up, sweetie. Talk to me. Mr. Santilli? Tears of joy, relief, you don't know. No. Risk and trouble looms in this episode, as doubts put a question mark to this couple's relationship and the paternity of their baby. You are certain that your boyfriend is the father. You're hoping that today's paternity result will help you save your family. The mother of the baby, Paisley, breaks down saying she and her boyfriend are living like roommates, a claim that the defendant didn't reject. He says the results of the paternity test will decide their relationship onwards. When the paternity results prove you are not done with Ms. Damon and her baby. Yes, Your Honor. They revealed that since the awareness of the baby, they had not been happy. Not even when the baby first arrived. Just fear and utter disappointment. All which was caused by a relationship ruining text message from the plaintiff's best friend. I received text messages while I was at work. Might be pregnant and that it's not mine. Are you holding those text messages right now? The text messages had a lot to decipher. I can imagine why he wasn't so excited, but the plaintiff reveals that her best friend just wanted revenge because she had also done the same thing to her. Spite is what she called it, but here are the message. Also, she's been blank guy to new people she's been blanking. Though still doubtful, the defendant didn't run, which is quite noble for someone in his predicament. He says there's a chance the child is his, and that is enough to make him stay. He reveals he even signed the birth certificate and cut the umbilical cord. Is my child, and I grew up without a dad. 50-50 chance, that's a good odd for me. 25%. But for some reason, the plaintiff is spitting on him for staying. She probably had a lot of guilt weighing on her. She even claimed he embarrassed her, but who knows? My friends were in the room and you said I you did not care. want to sign the birth certificate. Why were you there through the whole thing? Why did you stay? I want to be there for the little okay. thing. That's what counts. To shake things up, the best friend in question is invited into the courtroom, and she sure has a lot to say. A lot to which the plaintiff rejected or restructured to repaint the issue in her favor. But unlucky for her, the best friend brought receipts. Messages between you and the plaintiff, Ms. Damon. Correct. I'm about to wait till he falls asleep and go to another guy. The plaintiff's text messages all scream cheating partner, but she says she wasn't cheating. She called it having a lot going on, but the best friend seems to have a broken moral compass. With one man. Oh. Oh, oh you were? Yes. He was doing the same thing. I was faithful to my man, but I supported her cheating on you very exactly. much so. According to the best friend, the plaintiff has a lot of people in her phone dial that she could call it every chance to cheat rounding them up to almost five men. But still, the plaintiff claimed she wasn't cheating, saying she was there for him every morning, and that's what matters. And did Stuff I ever? Like and did I ever? Was I not there when you woke up every morning? I, I was there every... No, sleeping. I was there every night. You know you would have heard every door open. Let's try and give her the benefit of the doubt. Taking all of these from the plaintiff's perspective, it's her best friend coming for her for sweet, sweet revenge. But she can't deceive science, can she? It was May... 17th about you going to another guy's house. The plaintiff still finds it weird that he stays, and a reason for that is one we may never know. But Judge Lake calls her out for it and says all she's doing is making her look guilty. 
but it's very obvious that the defendant cares about the little girl. Baby, so, his, hold on, talking over everybody when they start talking? Like he shouldn't have any doubt because he framed an ultrasound. It takes love to stay with a child that's not yours, and the defendant says he doesn't have enough of that, raising the stakes higher for the paternity results. Judge Lake decides to read the results. Mr. Osborne, you are the father. <laughs> Doubt makes this plaintiff question his two children with the plaintiff. The plaintiff drags him to court to settle it once and for all, as she sees his doubts as ridiculous. Here's the reason why the defendant doubts the paternity of one of his children. Your doubt is valid because you were present when another man impregnated Ms. Stremke. DNA proof, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Apparently, the defendant's doubts have soared every height, as the plaintiff claims he even shows his doubts in front of the kids, especially their four-year-old who listens to their fights and has tantrums saying he's not her father. The defendant confirms it. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. In some instances, it gets brought up in fights and with the children are present. This is not good. The plaintiff explains how they met. They met when she was 13, and as she says, they fell in love, but their relationship was cut short, but was rekindled years later. The doubt surrounding the first daughter was that she slept with a man a few days before their rekindling, with which she found out she was pregnant a few days after. But then the defendant got a call. From a girl that I had went to school with, and she called and decided to tell him that I was sleeping with your daughter's paternity off of some girl you had never even met. A phone call could cause some doubt, but as she said, he had never even met the friend. No proof or nothing. Still, he doubted. But it's understandable, since they had only just rekindled their relationship. She said that the baby that Amber, Miss Stremke, had wasn't mine. We'd been together for two and a half, three weeks. Whoa. Added to that, their first daughter was born three weeks early, which is definitely a reason for doubt, considering she slept with somebody else a few days before him. But then, he signed the birth certificate of the first daughter. He claims it was a moment of joy for him, that he could see ahead of his doubt for the moment. If you had any doubts at that point, why would you sign such an important paper in her life? That's you. Yes, Your Honor. You signed it. But even after all that doubt, they stayed together for four years. Four years! The plaintiff reveals that she doesn't know why he has so much doubt. She says she never wanted to have any child again, deeming she had two before, one with another man before the daughter they had together but the defendant pressured her and she finally accepted. That is the hardest for me to believe because I was done having kids and there was a point in time where he was practically begging me for another child. But they both broke hell loose when they both decided to, she said, and I quote, spice up their sex life and they brought in a third woman, which the defendant chose and had a threesome with. But then the defendant wanted more and asked for another threesome, this time with a male. It got brought up, it'd only be fair if we had a male, male, and you. And I had changed my mind on it after I've had a child and everything that I decided no. She claims he persisted till she accepted, and then he brought his friend over and they had a threesome with his friend. But fate had something planned for them as a few weeks later, after the consensual threesome, with neither of the men involved using protection, the plaintiff found out she was pregnant with their second child together. Did the friend use protection? Neither one of us used protection, Your Honor. Approximately three weeks later, certain smells started making me sick again. Well, here's a paternity case without infidelity for once, but the defendant still has doubts about both children, to the extent that he didn't sign the birth certificate of the second child. He claims he didn't sign it because of doubt, and certainty that she also had doubt because she didn't pressure him enough. You feel that there's a disparity because you don't feel like she's pressing the issue to make sure you sign it. That's a very big indicator. Father is. But the timing was close, but it isn't still certain, as they were in a relationship and they confirmed they had sex before the threesome. Even the doctors confirmed that the baby was formed may be a 50-50 chance, and either man could be the father of the child. The defendant even says their daughter looks like his friend that they had the threesome with, because the baby has lighter hair. I'm just going to accept Lexi that looks said like, he like feels my buddy bad. that we had the threesome with. There's some similarities. I don't have that lighter hair. Her mom is white. What scares the plaintiff is he's going to walk away from them and for something as small as hearsay or even a threesome. They had the bravery to walk through the doors, so they knew what they were in for. But she still thinks the paternity test deal is just a ticket out for him. Want to be a dad anymore? It's just an easy ticket out. You know, to everybody else and on the outside, he's such a great dad, it's me. Parents openly denying their kids at any age is not good for anybody, not to talk of four years old. Judge Lake is about to read the results. Here's the first. Mr. Jaramillo, 
You are the father. And the second right after. Alexis Jaramillo. Mr. Jaramillo, you are the father. 